Got it. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today I have two legends on my show, Dr. Clarence Scrim and Dr. John McDougall, and they're going to be talking about many things related to nutrition, but they're really going to delve into the rice diet by, by Dr. Walter Kempner. And can you really eat white rice and not only lose weight, but reverse diabetes? Well, let's find out. Please welcome them to the show. Hello. Welcome back, Dr. Grimm. Pleasure to be here. How well, about me? Do I get a welcome back too? <laughs> Dr. McDougall, you are always welcome, of course, because without you, we wouldn't have this show because you're the one that introduced us to Dr. Grimm. So thank you. Well, it's a pleasure. I'll have a little background noise here because I'm not at home in the studio. So uh -huh. we'll do the best. <laughs> From my end, we'll do the best we can. But I know Dr. Grimm can carry yeah. the show. So I might, I might have some background noise too. But anyway, okay. Uh, uh, well, we're going to talk a little bit. I studied at Duke with Dr. Walter Kempner, who's the founder of, of the rice diet, uh, rice fruit diet was the original name. Uh, and it came about because he was interested in, in changing diet and, and allow the kidney to heal, he said. I'm going to show you a few examples of people who went through the rice diet at Dr. Kempner's place. At Duke, you, you'd come in initially to the hospital and you'd be evaluated and then you'd be placed on the rice fruit diet and usually go to one of the what, what was called rice houses at, in Durham there. And you'd live there until you were down to wherever you wanted to be or you were ready to go home because you'd mastered how to eat uh, the rice diet. So uh, this gentleman here, um, here's his pressure when he came to see uh, Dr. Kempner, 250-140. Um, he had what uh, used to be in Milwaukee, I called a Green Bay goiter. Um, and and uh, what we're going to show is the effect of five months of the rice fruit diet on him. And uh, Dr. Kempner kind of felt like fat was like a cancer. You don't just take part of it out. You want to get rid of all of it. That was his approach. Okay. Um, so this guy went, goes, goes on the rice fruit diet on the left and becomes the guy in the middle there. Pretty, uh, pretty impressive uh, changes, I think. Uh, many people comment that he's starving, but he's not. <laughs> All right. Uh, after rice, his blood pressure is completely normal. Here's another lady who was 48 years old. She had severe hypertension on three drugs. She had uncontrolled diabetes, fasting sugars of 350, very high triglycerides. His cholesterol is not too bad. And she goes on the rice fruit diet. Uh, we call this the metabolic syndrome today. I sort of like to call it, and Dr. Kempner likes to call it the etaholic syndrome. Uh, let's back up one. Okay, so here's the lady now, and then she goes on the rice fruit diet, and she becomes this lady. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead. Um, she was uh, there's her side by side after uh, 234 days on the rice fruit diet. Her weight was now down. Uh, to 98 pounds. Uh, her hypertension. Um, slide to work in here. Okay. Um, hmm. It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, there we go. And let me go back. Uh, hmm, some, something's not working here. Anyway, uh, her blood pressure was normal on no medications. She, she weighed 98 pounds. Her diabetes was completely gone and her triglycerides were completely normal. You can see them on the right here. Um, so uh, I saw a number of patients like this when I was at Duke um, and was, was very impressed with how the diet worked, but I didn't really get into it, uh, using it for patients until the DASH eating plan came out for hypertension specifically. Uh, it's a fairly difficult diet to, uh, to stick with, as you might imagine. Although once, the, once people got to the goal here, like this lady at 98, then he would liberalize the diet until their weight started to pick up or their blood pressure started to pick up. And then they knew it, this is how much uh, deviation from the rice fruit diet you can you can have. Okay, I think I'm going to take that off now. <laughs> All right, and uh, get back to the. Um, 
Did you want to stop screen share, Dr. Grimm? I think, yeah, stop, let's stop the screen share. Yeah, let, let me, I can help. I, I can okay, do that good. For you, I can, I can do that for you. There we go, there we go, okay. Let me, let me ask a couple of questions I get asked about. Okay. Go read the Kempner reports, like the one on weight loss from the Archives of Internal Medicine back, I think right. it was before. <clears throat> Notice that uh, Kempner initially started them out with a limited amount of food. Yes. Uh, can you eat the rice diet to the full satisfaction of your appetite without portion control and get the same results that you just showed? Or is it necessary to starve yourself in addition to limiting yourself just to rice and fruit, fruit juice? Yeah, I, yeah the, the, the initial starva quote starvation yeah. is to get, get people down to what, what Dr. Kempner considered sort of baseline status, blood pressure normal, sugar, sugar normal if possible. And and weight down to what's considered ideal uh, for that for that time, <clears throat> and then one liberalizes the diet. Uh, there there were some very nice metabolic studies done at uh, um, <clears throat> one of the NIH facilities using the rice diet, and it shows that you, if you adjust the calories, the people don't lose weight, but their their blood pressure goes down, their sugar gets better, uh, and and uh, their uh, Everything is is better. So, and as soon as you add add back a normal diet, their blood pressure goes right up, their weight starts up, and you stop it again, and it'll come right back down. Some very nice studies showing uh, that in most people who respond well, not everybody responds to this, uh, but those who respond well get normal blood pressures, normal glucose, cholesterol often normalizes, as you know. It's basically. Uh, the same effects, I think, as your diet is just a little more strict. And at the time, this was a one way that you could standardize it so people would could take it home with them. Well, you know, the, reason, right. the reason I ask is because one of the principles that I teach is that you don't have to deprive your appetite right. or make yourself sick with these low carb diets or these yes, new yes. GLP dash yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you if you stick to a, a a diet based on starch like rice, so people come back to me and they say, well, you know, I noticed that under the Kempner regime, you know, they start them out at say 800 calories or a thousand right, calories right. initially. Is that necessary to? I start don't think. I, no, I don't. I don't think so. Uh, I think it, he liked it because it gave a, a very quick effect. Right, yeah, he, he had uh, them under control too. Right. Right. A lot, a lot of community it, pressure. Yes, yes, and and Dr. Kempner pressure. Is he, that right? Did you, was, can you tell me what kind of a man that Dr. Kempner was? I, you know, there are all kinds of stories written about him, about how yeah. he was a little, little, little. He never married. I think he died at ninety-three right. or ninety-four yeah. old. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are some stories. I don't want to. I don't want to go through the dirt. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. You okay. can make up a whole bunch of stories about yeah. people. I just wondered what kind of man he was. Was he somebody uh, to talk to? Was he was he easygoing? Was he a good communicator? I know he loved his patients. There's no yes, question about yes, that. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that you can tell just from. Uh, yeah, when when I first uh, met him on the ward, he reminded me of somebody retired down in Miami. He had light clothes on, sort of light shoes, light colored shoes. Was a fairly gentle guy, unless people deviated from uh, what he wanted to have done. And then, and then he could be, then he could become very Germanic. I would, I would use the term. Um, that may not be a good term these days, but anyway, very strict. Very, uh, you got to do it this way. You can't deviate from what I'm saying because I know what works, and I've, I've, I've shown a number of times what works. You can do anything you want, but if you want to get better, here's what you got to do. That was basically his approach. Um, How about he, his colleagues? Uh... You know, I, um, uh, you know, I, I, I've seen the way that, you know, my colleagues have treated me. Yes, yes. And basically ignored me. Uh -huh. I understand back then they were uh, quite aggressive about uh, treating Walter Kempner like I, I think I recall, and maybe you could add to this, yeah. a visit from the state board, which questioned his uh, uh, taking medical records. And they left there, and you complete the story if I have it wrong. Mm -hmm. They left their 
because Walter Kempner took pictures of everything as we, you've been showing. Yes, yes. He'd say that was the best medical records we've ever seen. Uh -huh. And the, the metabolic ward study you were talking about by the NIH, uh, I think I have it right. It was done by, actually it was done by a guy named Rice. Yeah. And that's cited, if anybody wants to look at that metabolic ward study that Dr. Uh, Dr. Grimm just referenced, if you go to my December 2013 newsletter, it's talked about there how they they locked eight of his patients up to prove that the Kempner diet was uh, inadequate and would hurt people. Uh -huh. These eight people left the metabolic ward study that was uh, that was done by his opponents uh, left to, with <laughs> the idea that you know, there's nothing wrong. We couldn't find any problem with this approach at all, and these people got dramatic results. Do you do do you recall that? Uh, no, the one I'm referring to is is the study that was done by Dr. Dahl, okay. uh, salt of salt of salt fame, uh -huh. uh, and um, it was in it was up in uh, New York at Brookhaven because uh, they had they had a, a reactor there where they could do isotopic studies, um, and uh, one of the ladies particularly that came in um, was African American and her blood pressure just fell right down to normal on the on the rice fruit diet and it came down so quick that they thought she was just, just settling down from getting out of her environment and that was the cause so they added the salt back and the blood pressure went right back up and they did that two or three times uh so all of the people that he studied uh completed the study I think yeah. uh, the and and there are a number of people who tried to replicate it and I think it's because they didn't actually check the urine. The only way you know if these people are on a low salt diet is to check the urine. Initially, they checked chloride because you couldn't measure sodium. And then later was able to measure sodium. So if you're on a low salt diet, your urine sodium will be low. If you're on a high potassium diet, your urine potassium will be high. And he was very strict. Every day when you were in the rice house, you gave a urine from the overnight and he checked the sodium and potassium. And if it wasn't right, you got your rear end chewed out right in front of a lot of other people standing standing in line to be weighed and and uh, reprimanded by uh, by Dr. Kempner. Uh, one of one of the uh, there's there Johnny Carson uh, and uh, Buddy Hackett YouTube you can see where Buddy Hackett Buddy Hackett went down there for a while and he used to uh, go out you'd you'd pee and leave the jug outside your door at the, at the rice house. And they'd come by and pick it up. And Buddy Hackett used to said he, he had a lot of fun going out and putting salt in their urines. <laughs> and, then, and then he got really chewed out when uh, when Dr. Kepler saw the urine results. So the key, I think, to at least to the rice fruit diet is to monitor and be sure they're on it is to look at the urine sodium, which is what he did every day when they were at the, do, at the rice houses anyway. And I found the same thing with the DASH diet. I have a number of people who swear they're on the DASH diet. Which is which is pretty much like your diet, uh, Dr. McDougall, your eating plan. I don't like to use the word diet. Um, uh, and uh, you can you can measure the urine, sodium, potassium if their blood pressure hasn't come down. Uh, you can measure if how it's doing by just seeing how their weight's doing. Uh, but even when the weight came down in those studies by Dr. Dahl, if you added the salt back, the blood pressure went back up. So. So losing the weight didn't uh, completely cure the hypertension. You still had to be on a low salt diet. Many many people still had to stay on the low sodium diet. Well, was it was he an easy man to communicate with to talk to? Uh, I to yeah. Sit down and have a beer with. Yeah. Um, I could probably have done that. I only he only spoke one time. At, I was at Duke for four years, and. Um, he, he rarely lectured. Uh, the chair of medicine, Dr. Eugene Stead, always said, he says, Dr. Kempner's the smartest doctor I've ever met. And he was a smart, pretty smart guy himself. Uh, and uh, But a lot of people really didn't, didn't really kind of like him. They, even, even at Duke there, they were a little, um, I guess was... they couldn't get the same results. <laughs> and, and I think it's because they didn't pay attention to what was going on. Um, yeah. Well, the other unique uh, experience that I don't know whether you can expound on it for me or not, was one of the American Medical Association invited Dr. Kempner to give a talk in New York. Uh -huh. And he showed his, uh, his slides on, on uh, retinopathy. 
yes, and yes. reversal of eye disease. And one, somebody in the audience stood up and said, Dr. Kempner, you reverse the order of the slides. <laughs> and his response, as I was told to me secondhand, was, I will never talk to you again. And he yes. never did. Yeah, yeah. And he, he uh, as I said, uh, he only lectured once when I was there four years. Yeah. And that was that was to the uh, the house staff clinic because we had invited him down to talk, and he gave he gave a very nice talk. He had letters from around the world of people who had been referred to him for uncontrollable hypertension, and uh, they did very well. He showed them pictures much like I showed here. Well, before we get into the the work that you've been doing on the Dash program, which is you know well accepted by my colleagues uh, because it has a little meat. Yes. Um, maybe a little low-fat dairy. I, I don't, don't recall exactly. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. Yeah. And uh, so that's a, a more acceptable regime to to the public. It's not yes. one I find acceptable because I think it's too hard to follow. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. uh huh. Whereas if you know you offer instructions like Dr. Hunter did, it's pretty darn simple. You just have to learn rice, fruit, yeah, fruit juice, right. table sugar. <laughs> right. And uh, but uh, any any things that you remember that I could. I could pass on to other people, or I could have some some thoughts about as uh, as I, I make my journey. Any experiences you had with Dr. Kempner that stick in your mind that you'd like to share? Uh, yes, I remember uh, one particular uh, patient uh, who, uh, as I recall, was 75, 75 years old. Sorry, at that hang on. Uh, who was seventy five years old and came in with congestive heart failure and and her. Uh, Hang on. I don't know how to turn that off. <laughs> okay, I think I, she came in with congestive heart failure, 75. He, she, she'd been on the rice fruit diet for a number of years, lived there in Duke. Uh, I'm uh, sorry, I don't know how to seem to turn that off. Uh, anyway, uh, so she came in with congestive heart failure and her chest was almost full of her dilated heart. And right. it, it turns out she had no uh, um, aortic valve, very a very leaky aortic valve. Uh, well, hang on a second. Well, you're coming across just fine, so. Okay, all right. Uh, I'll just leave that over there. Um, so we we all on morning rounds we go around to the patient, and Dr. Kempner would always have uh, somebody bring the the X-rays. So you could he'd put the X-ray up and show the patient. Here's your big heart, um, and uh, you're going to get better in a few days. And his prescription for this lady was water. And um, sure enough, her heart came just came right down in in maybe a week, I think, right down to almost normal. And I asked him about this was in '64 when they were just starting to do uh, aortic valve trans replacement and surgery the ones that went click 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 the 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 plastic ones and uh, i said well dr kempner you know we we can operate on this lady and uh fix her up and he said well dr Grimm, i've been following this lady for 15 years now and as long as she stays away from salt she's perfectly normal uh, i did send one patient uh similar to her to surgery and and she died after the surgery so uh, that was an end of one, but that was very impressive. I, I came on, I couldn't believe the, his notes said uh, water only for the next five days and, and until the heart side. And just, it just it was amazing. It just came right down. Um, another uh, trick he used, uh, I'm not, uh, trick is probably not the right word. Another teaching lesson he used was people who would come in. Um, everybody got what was called a cross table lateral of the abdomen. So you got a picture laying down and you could, in, in those days you could see the, the spine, but you could also see the calcium in the aorta. Right. So, and, and he would put that up there. And so here you've got atherosclerosis right here. <clears throat> I can see it right here. And if you stick with my diet, that'll get better. Um, I don't, I don't know that he ever demonstrated it got better, but it, it didn't seem to get worse as long as you stayed on the eating plan anyway. Uh, so those are two memorable ones uh, that I recall. Uh, he was just a, a very, um, looked, like, looked like a very mild man, but he could be not so mild <laughs> very quickly, very quickly. 
that people look forward to any confrontation with Dr. Kempner. <laughs> no, you uh, didn't. You tried. You tried to avoid that if you could. Um. Anyway, um, you spent uh, four years there, and, I, and yes, I did. Uh, I, I, I'm sure that, that Kempner made a lasting impression on you as far as the remainder of your practice of medicine. Yes. How old are you? Um, I'm 84. Oh, you look good. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, do you um, do you do you follow the rice diet? Uh, I do not, nor did Dr. Kempner. And Dr. Kempner said, "When I get heavy and I have hypertension, I do." I do I do limit my salt intake. I do have hypertension. I'm a little bit of a diuretic and try try to eat as close to the dash diet as I can, but it's not it's not easy as you as you know. But uh, it's 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 really tough. Yeah. You know, I can imagine. That's of course, you know, why I describe the Kempner diet as the diet for the nearly dead. <laughs> and I just I describe what, what we teach as the diet for the living, where you need to offer no apology, but you get you know, 90, 95% of the benefits. Yes. But the, the, I, I, I send, I probably prescribe, recommend, at least to offer as an ideal uh, to three or four patients a year. Yes. The program. Yes. Particularly those with failing kidneys or severe yes. heart failure. Is I say, look, you know, this is where you want to be before you give up. You know, yes. because this is the ultimate in uh, taking the burden off the body, allowing the body to do as much as it can to compensate and heal. Yes. And when people look at that, you know, some of them have tried it, and I think some of them are successful on the Kempner diet, but at least offering, you know, I mean, this man knew before I was, before I, uh, I was a medical doctor, I mean, he knew that uh, that diet was extremely effective therapy. Yes. And he knew, and I learned from him that even a diet of rice, white rice, fruit, fruit juice, and table sugar, was sufficient for human nutrition. Would be yes. would adequately <clears throat> supply everything somebody needed. Yes, and it was a it was a comforting for me to learn those two lessons from Dr. Kempner. Uh -huh. The power of diet therapy, and he is the the father of diet therapy, as far as I'm concerned. Yes, yes. The, the power of diet therapy and the fact <clears throat> that the simplest of diets. And I should have known this. I mean, after all, throughout history, people, because yes. of deprivation, because of wars, they were just lucky to get a, a, a yeah. you know, a tablespoon of white rice a day. Yes, yes. They had people out and they survived. Not on a tablespoon a day, but yeah. you know, it's it's not it's not an it's not an unknown thing for somebody to eat the Kepner diet and more restrictive, and survive for yes. years. Yeah, there's um. Uh, during the siege of uh, I mean, yeah. uh, St. Petersburg in the Second World War, there was tremendous starvation. Uh, yeah. The Germans had all the food blocked off and the blood pressure went down low. People would faint. There were no lights. I visited there one time and the, the museum, they had little things you wore around that were radioactive that glowed in the dark. So, so if you were out in the dark because there was no light and you bumped into somebody, or you didn't want to bump into somebody because if you got fallen down, if you fell down, you were so weak you couldn't actually get up and you'd freeze to death. Uh, after the lift of the siege, there's a series of reports in Russia of onset of malignant hypertension was the most common reason for admission to the hospital. Probably, I think, because all the salt came in, the spam and all that good stuff. Uh, and there's some great stories from Russians how much they love spam and how much it tasted so good when they hadn't eaten anything for a long time. Uh, yeah, and they went through a period of hyperphagia. Oh yes, yes, where yes. They, they ate beyond their their even the desire of. Uh, the best sort of control study of that was uh, by Dr. Keys, uh, Ansel Keys at Minnesota, where he they actually starved people for uh, I think six weeks and. Um, one of the one of the maybe twenty or thirty patients they had had a problem with overeating. Once he was off the diet, and he went back, and he actually went into heart failure. Uh, this is this is you noted from from overindulgence. He'd actually eat, go out, and throw up, and come back and eat again. Um, he was he was it, was. it was it was actually I I just had a chance to review the Minnesota starvation experiment uh, by Ansel Keys, which lasted yes. lasted eleven months, thirty six conscientious objectors. And we really learned the pain of hunger for six months of starvation. Yes. yes. 
And when they were allowed access to food without any restriction, they overate and they gained yeah. 10% more than their original weight. But that's yeah. what happens when you diet, when you starve. Yeah, when you starve. Pain. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's what people don't understand who go on diets intermittently is they say diets don't work because once they go off the diet, the, the fear, the pain related right. to the hunger they just went through <clears throat> causes them to go through a period of hyperphagia. Mm -hmm. And it it just doesn't work out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Diets don't. Yeah, you got to stick with the, again, I, I prefer eating plan. The people people don't like the word diet. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you, uh, uh, you obviously, I know one of your most important message is low sodium. But let me ask you, uh, the, I, I have no doubt, you know, I'm, I'm a strong believer in that sodium restriction of less than 500 milligrams a day. I mean, they, they, I've heard that Walter Kemp used to wash the white rice. Yes, to get the yes, off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know that's powerful therapy. But unfortunately, or fortunately, the studies show that the moderate sodium restriction that people are advised to do, like 3,500 milligrams a day, really results in very little reduction in diastolic. Yes, right, right. So uh, the average citizen, I've come to the conclusion, can tolerate a little salt. Do, do you see any hazard yeah. of going on a very, very low salt diet? Well, some people would get hypotensive even, even in the first week or so, and he'd have to add back a little more salt or a little bit of chicken or a little, a little bit of something so that, so that they weren't, the uh, blood pressure wasn't falling so much. And uh, one of the early investigators of that sort of diet says uh, that unless your patients complain of low blood pressure and feeling bad, you haven't really pushed the low salt diet well. <laughs> and and if you haven't haven't got your patients haven't gotten symptomatic, you're you're not really pushing the low sodium. Uh, Dr. Kempner Carrick saw the everybody every day, you know, in yeah, the morning, yes. and so he could see how they were feeling and he could adjust things as needed. Uh, some people couldn't couldn't stand it. They they uh, there was a pizza place right close to the rice house. It was a favorite place for pieces for people to go, and it would show up in their urine. And he'd he'd say something like, uh, you know, in fact, the lady with the big heart. I remember he said, as long as she stays away from pizza, she's fine because <laughs> she she was in the rice house and she'd go out to eat at this, at this uh, pizza yeah. place. Did uh, you ever hear the story? And, you know, I, I've been listening to Walter Kempner for, for uh, people who have, who've known him, like Robert Rosati or Frank. Yes, Nielen. yes, I yes. Have the, I have the opportunity to get to know you and hear your stories. Uh, I mean, th there are a couple of things that maybe you could verify or not for me. One is that he had a he had a throne in his office. Uh, I didn't I didn't ever get to his office. The other thing is, is that if, uh, uh, a conversation he had with a man and a wife was, lady, you might as well take a gun and stick it to your husband's forehead and pull the trigger, because that's exactly what you're doing by feeding him yes. what you're feeding yeah. him. I mean, do you I, think uh, it would come out of Walter Kempner's mouth? Um, that doesn't seem uh, something that he would say. Okay. I think that's a bit of an exaggeration. Right, well, how about this one? How about this one? All dieters are liars. Yes, I, he did say that. He did say that. Right. That's the reason he checked the urine because he'd say, uh -huh. okay. you know, they swear they're on the diet, but the urine shows they're not. You know, they're, they're lying to me. Um, when my patients, uh, the, the DASH diet that I recommend is 1,500 milligrams of sodium. This is for people with hypertension. I focus on people with hypertension. It's also a high potassium diet, but but uh, a few patients don't do well on that and they want to try the rice fruit diet and they, there's an added benefit to going to the rice fruit diet. Uh, and then they, they learn to liberalize back to what, what their body can handle and eventually come, come to something that, that they can live with. Uh, many, of them, many of them just say, I can't, I can't do the dash. I, I travel business and I can't eat out. You can't eat out. Uh, although you have some good directions on how to eat out. Well, you know, so it's the people that, that I'm talking about are the people who have, you know, a matter of weeks or months, you know, to live or at least to yes. be, live, live normally. <coughs> and so, you know, it really comes down to you're going to follow a very, very powerful diet, very limited diet, or you're going to, you're not going to be alive or enjoy life anymore. Um, 
and unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, our profession has abandoned the diet therapy in favor of money making therapies. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd agree with that. Uh, the uh, the Dash diet has been recommended for everybody with hypertension for twenty years, and I rarely see a patient who's ever had a doctor say, "I want you to do the Dash diet." So somehow that information hasn't been translated to the practitioner that actually uh, diet does help blood pressure if people stick to the eating plan. If they don't, then you're not going to see any blood pressure effect. As a, as a practicing doctor, uh, you have to deal with bags full of drugs. Yes, yes. How do you feel or how would you share with our colleagues what it's like to take half the pill pills away from people or all yes. the pills away from people? Do you, do you get frightened <laughs> doing that? Uh, like, you know, our colleagues do. They're, yes, yes. They're afraid oh. to reduce or stop medication. They'll change you from one brand of diet of high blood pressure pills to another, but they won't reduce or stop them. Right. right. Do, you, no, do you get frightened? Do you get frightened by when you stop medications on people? No, I, I don't, but I, I don't get frightened by really high blood pressures because they don't stay high very long. Right. Usually. Uh, other people get frightened, you know, when you got a diastolic 140. I've had patients who I've, I've said, well, let's go ahead and and taper your medicine and start you on this diet, and they get off the medicine. They, which they, and many have a bag of pills. So one, of, one of my uh, common statements is, "You're taking too many medicines. We need we need to see which of these we can stop." Mm -hmm. And because you're just on too many medicines, there's too many interactions, and you got too many doctors. Basically, <laughs> you right. need to see somebody. Yeah. yeah. Well, you uh, get a referral. It's a, another doctor managing your problem. Yes. Yes, correct. Yeah, I, I try. I try and explain to my patients that, you know, I really worry about them when they first come in, and it usually takes me about four days to get them off their medications or to on a minimal mm -hmm. dose. And after the fourth day, I get to sleep because yeah. I know they're going to be just fine. After I get <laughs> right. them on a minimum amount of drugs, but between the time we start and the time we reduce their medications to you know, absolute necessity. Yeah. I worry that they're going to end up with low blood pressure, low blood sugar, all kinds of other adverse reactions from the pills and getting them off yeah. the pills is the most comforting thing from yes. my point of view yes. as a managing physician is just to get them off the darn drugs. Yes. And I, I, don't, know, I don't, you know, I was in a situation recently where I was on a panel with a, a fellow colleagues who were supposed to be practicing diet therapy. And they brought out a case of somebody who was diabetic and high blood, you know, typical patient, the usual. Yes, 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 the usual and, and they asked me foolishly how I would take care of this person. And I said, I would stop all their drugs. Yeah. And then yeah. I would start from there. And I had back only what was necessary. I'd stop all their insulin, all their diabetic pills, because I was sure they were type 2 diabetic, yes, all their yeah. blood pressure yeah. pills. And they were aghast. They couldn't yes. believe I would say yeah. such a thing. And then I asked them the, the important question. I said, have you ever seen anybody hurt by high blood sugar? And they couldn't think of anybody. Yeah. I said, have you ever had any, hurt anybody hurt by low blood sugar? Oh, yeah. Lots yeah. of people. Same <laughs> yeah. thing with high blood pressure. Yeah. You know, a few days of high blood pressure, you know, and your patients and Kepner patients have come with years. Years, yes. Of yeah. morbid yeah. hypertension. Yeah. You know, but low blood pressure, you fall over in your mashed potatoes. You've <laughs> got to get them off the drug. Yes, yeah. Yeah, you get you can't do both at the same time usually. And I always set up some patients I'll set up a tapering schedule, cut it in half for two or three days, half for two or three days, and then stop. Yeah, and, that's one way to work it from from that way down. I just yeah. go up. I, yeah. I start yeah. from the lowest and yeah. move up. And you could probably do that. Yeah. Uh, well, I've but, I've never I've never regretted it. No, I haven't either. And many uh, I, I, uh, I've done a lot of work with renal artery stenosis, which is a curable form of high blood pressure. And, um, many of the patients, I thought the high blood pressure was what was their head did, wasn't working right. And they didn't feel good. And they, and, uh, when we, when we fixed them with their renal artery, they suddenly felt better. I think it was probably because we stopped all their medicines. Yeah, their blood pressure was better from the renal yeah. from the surgery, but we also stopped all the medicines that in those days were pretty nasty medicines. Actually, uh, I, Aldamed, I used to so Aldamed, Aldamed, I used to call the shadow because it clouded men's minds and women's. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, well, it, it's hard to convey that to uh, our colleagues who have been educated that, you know, the more the more pills, the more treatment, the better. Of course, yes, yeah. the more treatment, yeah. the more money you make. And yes. that, that may be an underlying issue there. <laughs> but uh, what, what you've been doing this now, you, you left Kempner a long time ago. And you, you're now in a, a general practice, are you still practicing? Uh, I do telemedicine and I run a group, uh, a web group for people with primary aldosteronism, a very common right. cause of severe high blood well, pressure. We, we need to know right now, and AJ is going to put it someplace in the, in the chat, is we need to know how people can get in contact with you if they'd like to have a telemedicine okay. appointment. Uh, yes. So what, 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 what do people, if they need to know more about yeah. Dr. Clarence? Okay. Yeah, my uh, my email is lowerbp2 at mac.com. So, and I think Chef AJ has that. And, Absolutely. And Dr. Grimm has been on the show before that email, uh, that uh, that information is in the show notes and I'll also make it available today as well. And and uh, they, I've, I've run uh, uh, groups on the web for primary aldosteronism for 20 years. Also, mm -hmm. I've, probably, I've probably seen 1,500 patients with primary aldosteronism, which is said to be, I also studied with Dr. Khan, by the way, who I just know, got I, I know that name. Yeah. <laughs> what, and, what causes primary hyperaldosterone? It's, yeah, it, it's a, an adrenal tumor, a, a growth on the adrenal gland that puts out too much aldosterone, which is a salt and water retaining hormone. That uh, but, too much but of that. What, why, why, what causes that? I mean, we why, don't know. Why would the adrenal gland yeah. develop hyperplasia? Yeah, we don't we don't know. I've I've often wondered uh, if repeated episodes of stress somehow kicks out ACTH that makes the gland grow not normally. They're genetically the tumors aren't all the same. They got different. So there's there's several things going on. We just don't know what causes it. Well, how about it being due to a response of even a low potassium, high sodium diet? The adrenal glands have to pump up pump out a whole bunch of hormones. Yeah, to correct right. the condition, and pretty much they get autonomous. Yeah, and they have adrenal hyperplasia through years of eating yeah. a typical Western diet. I, I, yeah. that's what I thought. We now we've, we have drugs. We have drugs to attack those hormones. Yes. yes. Um, the the longest uh, patient I've had on my group who's been uncontrolled hypertension is fifty years mm -hmm. until she went on the 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 uh, dash diet. She lived in New Zealand, been to every expert in New Zealand for blood pressure, and they could never control her. And with, within a week, she was, she said she's first normal blood pressure she's, she's had since she's 20. And did you stop her drugs? Uh, we did. Yes, we did. Yeah. And we tapered. Many of them would have to be on something like spironolactone or a plerinone for their, which blocks aldosterone. Uh, many patients with primary aldo, um, have a problem with their potassium getting real low because the American diet is pretty low in potassium actually compared to what we, if you look at the uh, uh, the, the uh, evolutionary diet, men, men and women evolved on low sodium, high potassium basically, uh, and mostly meat uh, <laughs> and, and, until the uh, uh, we started growing things. Well, you know, I think most of our listeners don't know what spironolactone is oh, okay. or, or hydrochlorothiazide yeah. or chlorothalidone or reserpine right. or the right. drugs that you and I learned to prescribe 50 yes. years ago. Right. You know, they have new drugs, but, but you know, one thing lacking in the, in the pharmaceutical business is new high blood pressure drugs that they can patent. They're yes. doing really Correct. good on the yeah. diabetic pills. Yeah. It's been really good on the um, Can cancer meds, <laughs> but they, they've not developed any new good blood pressure pills. They've right. got some new no. cholesterol drugs at twelve thousand yeah. dollars a year. Yeah, so they're kind of behind as far as as far as fleecing the public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, many patients say they'll add one drug and that doesn't work. They'll add another drug rather than stopping one and trying another. And, and again, I, I've seen people on eight or nine different kinds of blood pressure pills, which is unbelievable, actually, to me. Well, let me ask you, uh, you know, you said you're one of the few people that I can relate to as far as 50 years of experience, because there aren't many of us out there. Yeah, no, that's uh, true. If, if, you, if you felt uh, if you felt threatened, uh, did, if you felt attacked, if you felt 
if you felt uh, in any way that you were in uh, any kind of jeopardy with your medical license or you know anything like that, if you have you had any type of response that would suggest that maybe you were a, a bad doctor? Mm. No, not me uh, either. You know, they just ignore me. <laughs> yeah, right, right. No, I've I've not really uh, had any issues. Uh, uh, I've had patients and doctors question what we're doing, but right. when they see the results, then then many many are convinced, but many are not. I don't know why. Uh, they they what what they learn in medical school doesn't change much, yeah. uh, and there are a lot of people out there who were trained a long time ago. Uh, for example, in in primary aldosteronism, in the advanced cases, blood potassium is low, uh, but we now know that many of those patients evolve over time, and they're they weren't born with a low potassium. And when the tumor gets big enough and is putting out so much salt retaining hormone, then the blood potassium goes down. We do have medicines that block that. Um, so, uh, Spirolactone is called an, an aldosterone blocking agent. Um, there are some newer drugs coming out that actually block the synthesis of aldosterone now in the adrenal gland. They're just on, there've been some initial trials with that, which is actually very exciting because the ones that block the drug don't actually lower the aldosterone. Actually, they actually tends to go up. And, and I think that's one of the reasons that lowering the salt intake helps, helps these people so much. Well, any, any other exciting stories you can, I mean, the thing that I have to convey to the people listening, and hopefully there are some of our colleagues listening, yeah. it's just, just what a rewarding practice it is to have your patients get better. Yes. And yes. Not, not just offer them a bunch of excuses and a bag full of drugs. I mean, to, to be a doctor, to see right before your eyes, these miracles happen and to feel like you've been part of it. You've helped them regain their health and their yes. parents. Yes. It's so yeah. rewarding. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're in the profession and you're not having a good time, it's because <laughs> you're being yeah. bought by the drug industry. Yeah, so. I agree. I would concur with that. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, well, one, yeah, one, I can remember one family uh, with really nasty hypertension in the mother and she got when she got on the diet and she, she was able to balance her checkbook again. And one of the daughters said, Doctor, you've given my mother back to me again. Thank you. Uh, well, that, that, that's supposed to be our job. <laughs> I think so. It's to, it's and to it's fun. I, I, it's fun. I could do it 24 hours a day almost. Yeah, I know what you, I know exactly what you mean. I yeah. and people often wonder when I tell them that the most fun I have is working. Yes, I, yeah. Work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can tell you do too. <laughs> uh, any any particular hints you would have have somebody who's listening who, you know, they're over they're tip they're t eighty they're like eighty percent of the rest of the Americans high cholesterol, high triglycerides, a slight elevation of elevated sugar, high blood pressure, too fat, too constipated. What kind of what kind of words of uh, encouragement do you have with these people? When they're yeah, I, I like to I, I like to preach that heart disease, diabetes, and uh, stroke are not a normal part of the human condition. It's only when you feed your roots incorrectly do you get these problems. And you're in control if if you want to change things. Uh, we can do that with diet and maybe some medicines, but let's just try working on the eating plan first because it works in two weeks. You know, and you've seen it, I'm sure, as well. You know, it, the blood pressure is down in, in one week with, with a very strict dash um, and systolic's down in one week and diastolic's down in two. And the patients can't believe that and the doctors can't believe that, but it actually happens. Well, that, that's been one of the messages I've been trying to give lately is you know, you'll get better in four days. You know, once the bowel yes, yes. is cleaned out of its old contents, starts to get better in four days. You can't expect any of the first four days. Yeah, yeah. Seven days, most people see that they're on the right track. Yeah. I tell them by four months, if you haven't solved your problems listening to me, go find somebody else. Yes, yes. Yeah. We're going to get better that fast. And it's so good to have you reaffirm that that's what happens. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, you've got heart surgery scheduled next month. I bet if you follow what we suggest, you won't need it. Yes, <laughs> well, yes. you'll, you'll figure out you don't need it in a week. <laughs> one, know, so one of the examples, like yeah. 
one of the examples on our group is, is a gentleman who had surgery uh, for primary aldosterone 50 years ago. And he had bilateral hyperplasia. It didn't help him. This was in England. And he got, until he joined our group, after about 40 years, he was uncontrolled. And he, once he started moving to the DASH eating plan, his blood pressure came under perfect control. After 45 years, hard to, hard to believe. Um, yeah, for it, those of you it's, a miracle, it's a miracle. <laughs> the miracles in the human body, just yes, give it a chance. Is. Yeah. For those of you who don't understand or don't know what the DASH program is, let me see if I can characterize it. Uh, Ansel Keys started out with the seven country study. From that came the Mediterranean diet. And then, which is pretty well accepted, it's more fruits and vegetables, Mediterranean diet, emphasis on nuts and seeds and olive oil, and you get some fish. Well, then they, they, it, this evolved to the, uh, to the DASH diet. I even forgot what the acronym stands for. For the DASH, you know, I'm sure. Yeah, for the dietary DASH, approach is stopping hypertension. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Dietary approach is stopping hypertension. And, go ahead. And, okay. and that, that's as far as the profession has gone. Uh, and so they take credit for any dietary recommendations by invoking the Mediterranean diet. Then if they know a little bit more, they go to the DASH diet. But if they really understood where you and I came from, which is the most powerful diet therapy there is prescribed by Walter Kempner at Duke University, yeah. you know, then, then they wouldn't say the DASH diet is too strict or too hard. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll show you what too strict, too hard is. We, <laughs> yes. If you think we're top, we'll introduce you to Walter Kempner. Yeah, yeah. The uh, Mediterranean, the first, first really good study on the Mediterranean diet showed the lowering of heart attacks more than any other medicine has ever been tried. Yeah. Uh, so it it works. Uh, it, it's similar to what you prescribe, similar to what the DASH eating plan is. The, the, the difference is with the DASH, you can monitor the sodium to be sure they're on it. Because people will tell you, I suspect, that doctor, I'm on my diet, but I'm not losing weight. Yeah. <laughs> but you're not on the diet. Not on the diet. Yeah, I've been doing this a long time too. Yeah, I yeah. You know, I, I don't argue with him. You know, I could no, say no. what Walter Kemper says or think no. all dieters are liars. But, uh, you know, it's the, the, the results are so consistent. They're so profound yes. that you really can't fool anybody if you don't get the results. It's like, you know, it's like you're a hardcore drunk. Yes. And you quit the booze and you, you tell me you're still falling down. Mm, well, <laughs> then you didn't quit the booze. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or, or you're a smoker. And, and you're still coughing. Well, you know, you're a closet yeah. smoker. I, I'm from Missouri. And what I tell them is show me the pee. If you're on the diet, show me the pee. And I'll bet you. Oh, yeah. That'd be good. I've, I've, I've won a number of beers on that, as a matter of fact. Do you, do you have a, a sodium, some kind of spectrometer or something? How do you test it? No, uh, you just you could just send it to any lab. Do you urine, sodium, potassium? And uh, I like to do a creatinine. If it's a spot one, then you can kind of convert back to the total 24 hour. Um, but if you look at the urine ratio of sodium and potassium, it changes within a day when you when you move to the DASH eating plan. And so it, it's a very good monitor um, and easy to do there. Uh, one of the companies in Japan has a device you can measure that at home electronically. Which I think is a very good idea, but they're not they're not currently marketed in the US. There are some dipsticks you can use. They're for swimming pools, but they measure the chloride in your urine because most of your chloride comes from sodium chloride. You know, I did a, a show with Chef AJ a month ago on kidney failure. And I'd have to say I was shocked at the number of people who sought more information. There, there must be an awful lot of people with failing kidneys out there that you run into. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit of how, how you take care of people who've lost, you know, they're headed for dialysis. So yeah. they're, they're down to the last 10% of the kidney function. <laughs> right, right. Well, the most common, you, cause take... kidney, the most common cause is high blood pressure or high blood pressure diabetes. And so you got to, you got to, and there's some very nice studies showing if you control the blood pressure, the rate of decline of kidney function is slows. And you can actually see that by following the blood creatinine, which is one of the measures of kidney function. Um, and uh, particularly, and if they're got kidney disease and they're swollen, that that means they're eating more salt than their body and their kidneys can handle. And moving to a low sodium uh, uh, diet will will 
rapidly removed that edema, the swelling. Um, uh, you've got you got it. I, 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 my experience has been that when people come with kidney failure, you put them on a lower protein diet, like we recommend, right. the BUN yes. drops as expected. That's your blood urea nitrogen, which comes from protein. Yes, correct. The creatinines may get a little bit better, but not mm -hmm. much. Yeah. Um, many, many people with hypertension, when you first lower their blood pressure, the kidneys been used to seeing that high blood pressure. And when it comes down, the kidney function gets worse measurably, but eventually yeah. that's in many patients that will heal and their creatinine will, you can start seeing it going, sorry, going down, get the, the EGFR gets better. Um, also, you know, where, I, where I see the profound difference is when you get them off the artificial blood pressure lowering medications. Yes. Which yes. deprive the kidneys of circulation and you get them yes. off the diuretics and the beta blockers and then, then the creatinine will improve dramatically. Yes, correct. correct. Sometimes. Yeah, uh, because again, because when you lower the pressure acutely, uh, the mm -hmm. kidney doesn't work. The kidney doesn't like that. The kidney likes to keep the blood pressure where it's been. And if you lower it, it does, does some things that, that are not good for the kidney, actually. No. So, um, well, it's, it, it's, it's, so a fun, it's, it's a fun business. So important that, that they reduce the medications in a timely manner, which is in my case, uh, we, we stop about, oh, I say 90% of the medications day one. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's a little shocking to people, but you know, after three or four days, they, they figure we've done the right thing because they're yeah. off the medications and their cholesterol is better and their blood pressure is better and their sugars are better. And they're feeling better. They argue with numbers, right? And they're feeling better. It's so amazing how fast they start to feel better. Yeah, we had a person in the last, in the last program, this was the case, uh, this man uh, he was an attorney, really smart guy, you know, very demanding. Of course, when he told me he was an attorney, he expected me to, to end the conversation to get scared, but I, I didn't. But uh, we had to get him down to where I would guess he came in on six blood pressure pills and probably four diabetic medication. We had to get him down to the last blood pressure pill and stop it before he admitted I'm not dizzy anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm right, dizzy right. all day long. I, I can walk. I, I don't fear falling anymore. But we, it, came, it got to that resort. And that's why, you know, in my approach, because we only have 12 days in our telemedicine program, is I like to start from the baseline. I like to get them off yeah. all the drugs right, yeah. right now. Yeah. That, that it, reasonable. I don't stop somebody's medication that needs them. Needs yeah. them. Right. Like sure. a type sure. 1 diabetic yeah. needs yeah. insulin. I never... <clears throat> Any foolish like that, but uh, you know the other medications that are put on to treat uh, signs and symptoms huh. that people don't really need to prevent an acute event they're they're gone they you they go in the trash yeah and and there are also medicines they use to treat the side effects of the medicines they're on, which Isn't is that you, amazing Isn't that amazing it is, it is yeah even even in the t v ads this is what shocks me this some of the uh drugs that we used to give for uh for severe mental yes. problems. Yes. And we would end up with a uh, tardive dyskinesia, mm -hmm. TD, they call it in the ads. Yeah. 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 Now they're selling drugs that treat tart tardive dyskinesia right. that counteract the psychiatric drugs that they, they're on. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing world. I, I'm waiting for the day when our colleagues stand up and say, enough's enough. Yeah. You, you yeah. ladies and gentlemen, have gotten away with murder. Why are you killing our patients and exactly i gotta step money. back to the door i gotta step i gotta step back to the door here just a minute uh, hang on all right uh, doc, dr mcdougall i have your slides up if you ever want me to show uh, them well yeah why don't we go over them really quickly and then i'll tell you what i'll, I'll let you uh finish the talk with dr dr grim and, and i'll get on to you know my day but let's we can go through those slides okay quickly. great let me let me just just give me a minute i gotta share share my screen Thanks very much. And um, can you see these slides, Dr. McDougall? Yeah, yeah, I can. Do you have any questions that are coming in? Uh, yeah, we do have questions. I, I can't do both screens at the, at the same time, though. All right. So well, have some time to answer well, them. Let me just show these pictures that I, I brought to the table uh, when Dr. Grimm gets back and see if he has some comments on these different uh, slides. Uh, slide show. Okay, wait a second. 
You're doing good. Bottom, bottom, bottom right hand corner. There we go. I think I have it now, Dr. McDougall. There you go. There you go. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, perfect. So you tell me when you need me to advance them. You can advance them, yeah. Okay. All right, Dr. Grimm, I I just want to show you a a collection of slides that I put together. All right. That I'd really like to have you comment on. Uh, We're going to go through the, this is Walter Kempner's classic paper on hypertension. Which, by the way, you can look up on Google, American Journal of Medicine, 1948. You can look up on Google and you should be able to get the full presentation, the whole article. If you can't, I know how you can get it for free. Dr. Grimm, uh, yeah. I want you to grab your pencil because I got a really big tip for you. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, I, I've maintained status at uh, oh somewhere between two and four medical schools. I'm an right. assistant clinical professor because I like to use their library. Yes, yes. And I've I lost it. You, I will give you access to more papers than I can get from the university. Okay. Uh, it's HubSci, H-U-B dash S-C-I. Okay. H-U-B-S-I. And you okay. go there and you put the D-O-I number in, which is the digital. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, identifier. The DOI yep. number, you put that in there, it pulls the papers down. I mean, I've gotten thousands of papers I never thought I'd be able to get. HUB uh, SCI is the website. Yeah. And uh, you won't have any trouble at all. As long as you enter the DOI number, you'll yeah. get all these papers for free. That's a great uh, it costs 40, 35, 40, 50 dollars yeah, if you buy yeah. them over the internet. Yes, that's right. That's right. We don't, yeah. we don't want to tell anybody about this, though. <laughs> great, great. That's a great clue. Well, I'll, anyway, I'll, I, 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 I pulled a, probably a good share of what Kemper has ever written. And I, here are some of the pictures I have from the slides. I'd like to okay, hear you good. comment on good. these pictures. Okay. Go ahead, AJ. Okay, you ready for the next slide? Here we go. Do you recognize this guy? Uh, he was a lot older when I was down there. <laughs> Were you? Was he okay? Yeah. He, this, he, is the, this, this is the only picture he allowed. <clears throat> yeah. Walter Kempner, he had something about photography, even though he made his his fortune with Kodak. Uh-huh. He never liked his picture taken. Uh, I went, I tried to interview him for a television show I was doing, uh-huh. and it uh-huh. wasn't allowed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I interviewed uh, Frank Nealon and Robert yes. Rosati. Yeah. I have them on my website, but Kepler would never allow it. Yeah. But here he is. Here's the man. Here's one of the few pictures ever taken. Yeah. Probably in New York at the American Medical Association meeting, the one where he said, I will never, never talk to you guys again and gals. Yeah. Yep. Next slide. These are some of the pictures you showed. Next slide. You probably showed this guy right here. Yeah. Um... Next slide. <laughs> I don't recognize them, but there's good, they're oh, good pictures. Yeah. The typical. I mean, this 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 always yeah. happens. Yeah. It's not like sometimes, folks, you get these results. You always get these results. Yeah. That's right. And and uh, the I I've developed a way to show those by having them merge from one to the I, other. I, that, I like uh, that. I'm going to try and I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. figure that out. I'll teach you how to do that. Go All ahead. right. Here's uh, his retinopathy slides. These are the ones that he showed in New York. You see on the left-hand side, you see the exudates and the hemorrhages. And then the right-hand side, you see in a year or so, it all cleared up. And, and the, the, the audience stood up. One of the members of the audience said, you switched the slides, their order. Yeah, yeah. Any comments about yeah. this? Uh, yeah, and when he published his first uh, uh, work in, I think, 44, the head of... Uh, ophthalmology at Duke had to go before the medical board and testify that he was actually, he did the pictures himself and this is what they showed. They are before and after. It's not back. And that, that was one of the things that got, got Dr. Kempner out of almost getting his medical license taken away. Yeah. Dr. Rosati was my intern, by the way. Oh, great, great. Well, I, I haven't recently talked to him, but a few years back. Yeah. We did an interview that's uh, in my December 2013 newsletter that you can watch of Rosati and Frank Nealon. Okay. I had, I had yeah, Frank like on the show just, just recently. Yes, I saw that. No, yeah. good. So tremendous changes. You cannot get this with any drug or any, any laser therapy or anything else except by dietary change. And the results you get, it, 
20 out of 44 diabetics showed these dramatic results. Do mm -hmm. this first, then go for the laser. Do this first, yeah, yeah. then take the drugs. Exactly. Yeah. Gentlemen, yeah. your health is important. You can be cured. Yeah. Or you can be drugged and managed and gouged and mistreated and disrespected. And you could be a patient. Yes, yes. A drug disrespected person, that's a patient. A new definition on Chef AJ's show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, the 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 picture on the left in the old days when you had that you were dead within a year. Yeah. Until well, Doctor Kevner showed that. What you need to realize is what you see on the left, that's the eye grounds, which you can see by just looking in the eye with a very simple instrument called an ophthalmoscope. Yeah. I do, did it every day, eight times that's a day. When I, I saw yeah, patients. When I, yes, yes. You know, yes. Doctor Grimm, they don't learn how to do this exam anymore in medical school. Yes, they have yes. no idea. The students that go through our program have no idea what a fundoscopic examination yeah, is. Exactly. Yeah. And it's so really it's, simple to do. It's it's really simple to do. If no you profit learn. either. <laughs> don't, you don't make any money. Yeah, I, that's true. That's true. Uh, what, what you need to realize is this picture of the eye grounds you see on the left and on the right, you know, the after. This occurs in every tissue in the body. It occurs in your brain, in your kidneys, in your muscles. This occurs every place. Your whole system is, is hemorrhaging. It's full of exudates. You wonder why you feel bad. You're sick, but you yes. get well. You get well, as you see here, as Walter Kemper's success rate is huge. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, and and uh, I show these every time I give a talk to doctors. And they... Yeah. They're also sort of impressed. You know, they've never seen these before. Um, and uh, I think that's a pity. Well, once in a while, an ophthalmologist, like on the right-hand corner of this slide, which is hard to see now. Yeah. Uh, there is a reference to a paper that was written about 20 years ago where an ophthalmologist said, you know, we really need to look back at Walter Kemper's work. So once in a while, some brave soul steps out of line and risks their reputation among their colleagues to suggest that diet has anything to do with disease. Mm -hmm. That's yes. that's quackery, according to my colleagues. Yeah. How could diet have anything to do with disease? They didn't teach it in medical school. Yes. Next, yes. next slide, AJ. <clears throat> and uh, uh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no. Yeah. You go ahead. Your comments. Uh, yeah, I've I've run into that in treating primary aldosteronism. Uh, people, doctors say, well, diet doesn't work. You know, why are you doing with that? You need to be sure they're on these medicines. But it does work when you try. It's the only thing that works. The drugs yeah. are, are, are cover up signs and symptoms. Yeah. And at best, they're temporizing. You are getting cheated, uh -huh. fooled. But it's, you know, basic. Yeah. The nature, it's money. I love this picture right here. This, uh, this, this, did you see this one before? I've seen it before. Yes, yes. Pretty impressive. Uh, uh, as I say, Walter Kempner didn't write it much, but he took a lot of pictures. Yeah, that's right. And this little girl's uh, about 13 years old, and she's dying of kidney failure. Mm -hmm. And Kempner put her on the rice diet, and she's basically cured in just a few months. But, you know, in the 2011 issue of the New England Journal of Medicine, they talked about how this condition, nephrotic syndrome, is caused by drinking cow's milk. Mm. It's proved beyond a doubt they had uh, immunofluorescent imaging yeah. showing the bovine protein, the cow protein interacting with the kidneys. Uh -huh. and they, took the kids, they took these four kids off the cow's milk. Now, rightly, Walter Kepner didn't have available all the research we have today. And me, he may have thought it was due to the rice diet, which I'm sure it was. But taking them off the cow's milk stopped the damage to the uh -huh. kidneys. No, so I missed it. It's a great, okay. Oh, it's a great article. It's, uh, nice. it's look up nephrotic syndrome and bovine yes. serum yes. albumin. Yes. And I'll, I'll be glad to just write me and I'll, I'll send you the paper. Or you can get it by going to uh, SciHub. Yeah, got it. Okay. I'll try that. You'll love it. You'll love it. Yeah, I, I like to say a picture's worth a thousand words. Yeah. And these pic the pictures you've got here are perfect. Yeah. Next slide. Uh, yeah, here's here's reversal of artery disease, 
which I love to show people. I, if you're a clinician, you know, a nurse, yeah. technician, physician, uh, you should understand that the classic change that occurs with low blood supply to the heart is what we call ST depression, which is what you see here in the QRS uh, configuration uh, uh, as you see on an EKG. There's, there's a segment of that particular graph that is depressed and that's called the ST segment. And it reversed that, showed that he could reverse with his diet, reverse artery disease to the heart. That was back in the 19, oh, I mid forties. Yes. I wasn't correct. born yet. These are 45, 1945, yeah. right there. <laughs> and if you're talking about bypass surgery, excuse me. Yes, you know, yes. You save yourself, save yourself $300,000 and a whole bunch of heartache. Yes. Yeah. Eat the rice diet. Yep. Yeah, very impressive. Uh, yeah. More slice, AJ. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, the, there's probably the patient you were talking about. Yeah. One similar. yeah. <laughs> very similar. Yeah. yeah. Half the patients who had cardiomegalia, you put them on the rice diet and they, their heart reverses in size back to normal. Oh, that's a good one. Oh. Yeah. You know, why, why bother eating rice, fruit, and table sugar, or like we do, a starch based diet with fruits and vegetables? when you can have a heart transplant. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. really, folks, think about it. <laughs> you have no idea what the post-heart transplant life is for a patient. It is misery. Drug after drug, doctor visit after doctor visit. Yeah, you're alive, but good grief. Not the quality of life you'd have if your doctors had given you the message of diet therapy. You could avoid the surgery. Yeah. And very often, the same patients on dialysis. You know, transplant helps, but they, they a, lot of them, a lot of them don't feel normal. Well, I was I was talking about heart transplant here. Yeah, I know, I understand, I understand. But kidney transplants are the sort of the same way. They are. That's a tough life. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I I you know when I try and talk to my patients about kidney disease and say they've got thirty percent of the kidney function left, mm -hmm. you know, I tell them, look, they they'll die of something else first if they follow a good diet. Your kidneys yeah. will last you the rest of your life. Yeah. And if they're not listening to me when I was in clinical practice associated with a hospital that did dialysis, I'd say, I'll sure, meet you sure. at two o'clock this afternoon at the dialysis ward, and I'll show you what your life yeah. is going to be like. It's going to be yes. hell on earth. Yes. You think the diet is tough? You think about spending four hours a day, three days a week tied to this sucking machine. Yes. That's a sucking yeah. machine is probably a good description. <laughs> Yeah, I I did nephrology very early on when they first started doing transplants, actually, and dialysis. Yeah. And at that time, they were dialyzing eight hours a day. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> eight hours well, a day. Yeah. Our patients, even if, if they've lost all their kidney function, they end up having to dialyze uh, less less intensely. Yes, yes, exactly. They don't have to get the exactly. protein. Of the, and the and seems easy to remove. And nephrologists don't believe that. <laughs> They don't well, believe it. you know, they, they don't have the training and it's part yeah. of the problem. Uh, they don't make their money that way either. Yeah. They make their money by turning. It, this is a, what, a $33 billion a year business dialysis. Yeah. The profit margins are huge. The people who own these, uh, these uh, businesses are multi, multi, multi millionaires. Yes. This, is, yeah. this, this is the biggest, the biggest theft in all of medicine. Well, no, no, I have to say heart surgery is, yeah. no, 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 maybe cancer, cancer treatments are the biggest, they're the biggest, I don't know where to start. <laughs> I can uh, remember. I, I feel so sorry for my patients. Yeah, yeah. Because they're being cheated. And yeah. you know, if you go to Sci-Hub and you look up the research papers, you can put them on your doctor's desk and you can ask yeah. him or her. Yes. Yeah. Did you do know this before you tell me that I have to have this surgery or these drugs? Yeah. yeah. Did you know this, doctor? <laughs> hey, I'm paying you my good money to, to yeah. get your advice. Did you know this? Come on. Come on, patients. Stand <laughs> up for your rights. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I agree. Let's see if there's another slide. Uh, yep. Oh, yeah. Here's your blood pressure. Go ahead. Tell us about this, Dr. Grimm. Okay, this is uh, um, a gentleman, and you can see his, his pressures were 200 over 120. He probably had retinopathy, I don't recall. He had a low PSP. That's an old way to measure kidney function down here, the PSP. Oh, okay. And, and um, 
you injected it, it's a dye, and you injected it, and a certain amount of it goes out in the urine, and you can measure that. We don't do that anymore. Um, you had retinal exudates, and again, with these pressures, your your chances of living a year were very small. And so we call, here we we call this malignant or morbid hypertension. Malignant hypertension, yes, yes. Yeah. And Dr. Kempner, when he talked, he had probably 30 or 40 letters. He had gotten referrals from hypertension experts around the world saying this patient is going to be dead in a year. Maybe you can help him. Yeah. <laughs> and he did. And he did. Well, I wish people, I wish our colleagues would send their patients to you and I. Yeah. You know, particularly the ones that are dissatisfied and that want to be cured and not drugged. Now, I re recognize there are a lot of people out there that would just soon eat, eat, drink, and be merry. That's your right. But it's not your right to do it with ignorance. You need to be well informed. And you're not, you're not getting the, the, the truth of the matter, the right side of the story, yeah. especially with this obesity stuff that's going on. Oh, you know, I, I, every day in the newspaper is about these GLP 1A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that big? And, you know, it, it just, it's just, I don't know. Where's the world come? Yeah, it, it's like in politics. I think we're getting to the point where the liars, cheaters, and polluters are going to be stopped. When my my fellow doctors and nurses and dietitians stand up for the patient, how, how long are you going to let your patients to be abused? Mm -hmm. Is my question. Am I, am I going to live long enough to see medicine turn around and be concerned about the patient, not not profits, but the patient? Uh, you you and I've been at this for so long. I, I bet you, like me, you've gone through periods of optimism. You thought, "Oh, just this is going to turn things around." Yes, exactly. And it never does. Yeah, yeah. Aces and arbs. I can remember when they first came in. They they were they worked amazingly well, but not in everybody. And you don't use both at the same time. But I see a lot of people on both of them, uh, and beta blockers, and calcium channel blockers, and and even a presaline. Some of the old old medicines that uh, they can stop all of those once they get once they feed their feed their roots correctly is what I say. I, li I like the way you say that because that's a great analogy. It's if you were a gardener and uh, you wanted to have a successful crop, and some expert told you that it didn't matter what soil you grew your crop in, you could grow it in sand or mud yes. or rocks. Mm -hmm. You know, or this great peat moss, uh, you know, doesn't matter. You can grow it any place, you know, yeah. and basically that's what our patients are being told. And mm -hmm. what happens to the plant is it, it can't survive. It doesn't have a good immune system. It doesn't flourish and it gets aphids and all kinds of viruses and infections and it wilts and it dies. And you give it all kinds of insecticides and pesticides and it do, yes. doesn't solve the problem. And it's the same thing with our patients. And I like they're that wilting, analogy. Yes, they're yes, wilting yes. because of the wrong soil. And we sprinkle them with pesticides and herbicides, you know, as blood pressure and diabetic pills. Yeah. And they never get well. They never get well because you haven't dealt with the feeding the roots properly. As you put it. I love that statement. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, another good quote that, that I like, you've probably heard, is that pharmacy begins in the kitchen. Goes yeah. back a long ways. Should end there. Uh -huh. I'll just, I'll, I know what those are for. Thank you. All right, uh, good. Is there, are there any more slides? A uh, few more, Dr. Oh, here. here we go. I, I don't know. I, I throw this in because uh, Nathan Pritikin, who was one of my mentors. Uh -huh. Yes. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure that name is. I, I, up I never, right? never met him, but I know the name. Yes. Uh, he was an amazing guy. I knew him. Uh, yeah. I did the only interview that, that was ever done on Nathan Pritikin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's up on my website. And same thing uh, with, with yeah. Dennis Perkins. It's the only, only interview that was ever done. I did it. Mm -hmm. I tried to get Walter Kempner, but he wouldn't allow yeah. pictures. Yeah. So. <laughs> I got I got his uh, his associates his his yeah. students, and I'm glad I get got you today on on record. This is really amazing for me to have somebody who knew Walter Kempner. I I I'm so I look back I say no, I should have tried harder to meet this man. I, yeah. I, just tried yeah. harder. I had a t I had a whole my whole TV crew. Yeah, with a show called Lifestyle Magazine that played in 95 percent of the households, and I was co-host. Yeah. 
And uh, I just didn't try hard enough to meet the man, mm-hmm. the number one diet therapist. But, you know, Dr. Grimm, he knew me. Uh, yeah. he, he, he told one of my his patients that we shared, he and I shared, that he knew me and he very much appreciated that I said such nice things about him. Because I guess not very many people did say nice things about him. <laughs> So uh, I kind of stood out when I talked about him as being such an amazing doctor. Yes. That, yes. that was in 1984. Yeah, yeah. So I've known the man a long time. Yes, yes. But this is psoriasis. And, and Nathan Pritikin told me that he's never met a case of psoriasis that didn't resolve with the diet. Mm, that's and interesting. Afterwards, I found Kempner's picture right here of a person with psoriasis. Yeah. And of course, the psoriatic arthritis and the lupus and the rheumatoid those are those are pretty well known to be corrected by a good diet but yes. you know psoriatic and the rash and you, know, <laughs> you need to know you can and i've seen it in my patients over and over again i i have no reason to deny what nathan pretty told me and that is that he's never seen a case of psoriasis that didn't have a tremendous response uh, that's you know, I, i've yet to find that patient <clears throat> of course of course you know how the saying goes we got to make sure you're doing the diet. Yes, yes. Exactly. All right. Jeff AG, what do you got there next? There's 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 the diet right there. Right. Okay. Very nice. And he would add white well, just another thing that shocks people is Kempner would add as much as uh 500 grams, which is 2,000 calories of white sugar to the diet of people who uh who had trouble with the weight, uh, with mm-hmm. keeping their weight on. Yes, yes. You know, everybody's pointing to sugar as the worst culprit. It's not. It's mm-hmm. not health food that rots your teeth. Correct, correct. But it's 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 not what it's built out to be. And anyway. Huh. But there's the Kempner. There's, there's the typical American diet, ordinary diet, as he described it back in the 1940s and 50s. Ordinary diet, high fat, high protein, low carbohydrate, high in sodium. The four grams of sodium, you know, right yeah. now, estimates are four, four grams is probably what Americans eat. Yeah. And then the, we have the rice diet here on the right. You see the uh, drop in fat, drop in protein, rise in carbohydrate, tremendous restriction of sodium. And that's what his, that's what Walter Kemper is known for is the yeah. sodium restriction. Yeah. But he did so much more. And I'm sure he, I know he realized it. Yeah. I, I, I visited the Rice House uh, in uh, Durham, North Carolina. My uh-huh. son was at, uh, doing his graduate training in chemistry there, yeah, in North Carolina. And, and I went and visited the Rice House and uh, met with, uh, I, don't, I don't remember who it was, but I was talking to him about how what tremendous results uh, our patients got with inflammatory arthritis, rheumatoid, lupus, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And they said, well, we get the same results. And Dr. Kempner thought it was due to getting the salt out of the diet. Then the joints didn't get inflamed or swell. I said, you know, I never thought about it that way, but yeah. I don't really care. Yeah. The important thing is that they got better using the same principles yes. that are starch-based diet. <clears throat> All right. Anyway. And a lower sodium diet. Yeah, so a low sodium, of course, yeah. Yes, I- Let's go on to the next slide, uh, AJ. I'm gonna. There, there's the book you were talking about. Yes, correct. Yes, That's Barbara yes. Newberg, Newberg, Newberg. I think I got it right. Yeah. But here is. Let's see if I have it in the next set of next slides. No, I don't. Um, I have the two volumes in print that Walter Kempner published. One was in German and one was in English of all his research. And mm-hmm. this was almost lost uh, <clears throat> to the public. And I was able to get uh, uh, one bound copy of the German and the and one bound copy of the English translation. Uh-huh. And without permission, I, I would have gone. I tried to get permission, but there was nobody alive today right. that could right. give me permission. Without yeah. permission, I copied <laughs> both volumes. And they're on the website. All you do is, my, you know, drmcdougall.com. You can download them as PDF files. Otherwise, they'd have been lost to history. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. both of Kempner's books, one in German and one in English, are there for you free. Same thing with Nathan Pritikin. He gave, he uh, published 50 copies 
of the research that he did. And after he died, his wife, Eileen, gave out the 50 copies. At least she said she did. She gave me one copy. I don't know what happened to the other 49. Yeah. I, I, lost, I lost that copy that Eileen gave me in, in the wildfires. Yeah. Uh, uh. Okay. I, I, I'll be ready in a second. In, in the wildfires of October 2017. Yeah. And fortunately, without permission, I copied Pritikin's research and I put it up on the website. I tried to get permission. Well, I believe me, I put, I put right. all the efforts necessary to get permission. I couldn't get it, so I didn't want it lost to the public. Yeah. Yeah. But you'll find that on our website too. Just okay. look at it. All right, I think we're done with slides and I need to go on to, it's been a, just, oh, you could show those last two. Oh, it doesn't matter, it's done. What I was, I was, I was gonna say something I said before, and that is next slide. Uh, uh, how influential Walter Kepner was on my career. And I look to him as being my most important mentor because he showed me the power of diet therapy and he showed me that a diet as simple as rice and fruit and fruit juice and table sugar was adequate. It didn't have any nutritional deficiency. So what I was prescribing couldn't possibly hurt anybody. And then right. next slide, <clears throat> then before I was born, 1947, Walter Kempner knew it to be false, things that doctors believe to be true today, like diet has little to do with heart disease. Our colleagues believe that, yeah. that additional protein improves health. They believe that, and protein yes. is toxic. Yes. Carbohydrates cause diabetes. That's as far from the truth and the research and the science and the opportunity for you to get well as can possibly be. Carbohydrate cures diabetes, especially yeah. type 2. Not type one, type two. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to have to run along. I can't tell you how okay. this hour has been for me to get to know you. And I hope we have a chance to get together. Pleasure here. Yeah, let's continue the discussion. I, I, it's a lot of fun. I'm going to go look at some of the stuff on your site, which I haven't yeah. seen. Well, you've got my email address. Thanks very much. All of okay. you have my email address. I do so. have, yes. Good. Yeah. Thanks. You'll be able to write me or to start Thanks. the website, drmcdougall.com. I'll, I'll turn it over to you, Chef AJ. Thank you so much, Dr. McDougall. Dr. Grimm, if you have a few more minutes, would you care to I answer can, a few questions? I, I can try that, yes. Oh, thank I you bet, so I bet much. he's good. I bet he gives great answers. Again, thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you, you for facilitating this, Dr. McDougall. Okay, so we have a few people that have submitted questions in advance, as well as people that are probably going to have questions live, but we always do the ones that were written in advance first. So thank you. Um, this first one is from Victoria, and she said, if, could you explain about electrolytes and how to keep them in balance when we lessen the amount of sodium in our meals? I have always drank water and still well, stayed well hydrated. I've heard an imbalance of electrolytes can cause headaches, among other things which concern me. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's probably more an excess than an imbalance. And, uh, um, and certainly... Uh, Many patients who go on the went on the rice diet and, and on the dice diet, one of the things that gets better is our headaches, uh, usually related to blood pressure, but I don't know about that. Uh, the electrolytes can, are primarily sodium, which is sodium chloride, which is salt. Chloride is, a, is the other part, and they, we often measure that as well. And the other one is potassium. Um, you have to have both of those. Uh, or you don't live. Um, the body has extraordinary control mechanisms to keep your blood sodium and your blood potassium right where it needs to be, so you don't get into trouble. Um, and uh, we often measure that, and it can go wrong for there's a number of reasons that the sodium can get too low, few reasons it can get too high, and the same for the potassium. And it's not an easy, it's not always an easy uh, thing to figure out what's going on. But yes, they're they're important. You're you're basically the all of our chemistry in the body goes on in a salt solution. We're we're a bunch of salts or in, in cells. So interesting. Thank you. So here's another question: uh, Is are there any foods or supplements to take? To, well, this is actually not about the topic, so I don't know if you want to take it. It's about PSA. Would you want to take it? It's not about the topic that we're. we're uh, tell me what PSA means. Polycystic. I think, I think that's a that's a thing when somebody has prostate cancer. A PSA. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's that's not measuring, really measuring PSA. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, well, so we'll we'll save that for when Doctor right. comes back because that's okay. not really on the okay. topic of today's right. talk. Yeah, good thing I didn't read it all. Okay. Ah, here's a question from Judy. What are the signs of too little sodium? Uh, low blood pressure. Um, if your blood sodium goes down for some reason, uh, and some, sometimes taking too many diuretics, you you can get out of your head. You can get confused. You can fall down. Uh, so the blood regulating the blood sodium is very important. And uh, today we can measure it quite easily. Uh, sometimes it's hard to figure out what's going on to make it go down too low. And there are a number of things that can do that. Great. Thank you. Uh, let's see if this is pertaining to the kidneys. Uh, does, is oxalate something that you talk about or worry Ox about? Oxalate, yeah, oxalate is one of the common components of kidney stones. Okay, so then I will ask this question then, okay. uh, because it, it is on topic. So um, Jean says, uh, da, 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 um, I am, I, I'm a big sweet potato and red golden potato fan, as well as spinach, chard, beet, greens, almonds, rhubarb, collards, and beans, all high in oxalates. Although I have not had any kidney stones, I'm concerned about, I don't know who Sally K. Norton is saying she recovered from serious health issues once she eliminated foods high in oxalates and changed from a vegan diet to an omnivore. What are your thoughts on the dangers of excessive oxalates? Uh, and unless your body has a problem handling oxalate and there are, that tends to run in families, uh, then you're you're almost not not likely to have any kind of problem. So I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about that. Okay. It sounds almost like a, a modification of the rash diet, dash diet or Dr. McDougall's diet. Thank you. <laughs> and this is from Megan. And she says, my friend, my friend has fibro. I don't know if this is, is fibromuscular dysplasia, some uh, no, fibromuscular dysplasia in her renal arteries yes, yes, and is yes. being told she needs a stent soon. Is this something that can be fixed with a whole food plant-based diet? Uh, the blood pressure might, might well get better on a lower sodium diet, but the problem is that the, the lining of the artery has overgrown and it's blocking blood flow to the kidney. Uh, and in the old days, we used to operate on those. And then when the stenting came around, the stenting looks pretty good in that, but you need to be, there are certain tests that need to be done to, to demonstrate that you need to have that done. Some people have it, but it's not it, on x-ray, but it's not causing any problems. Right. Thank you. I'm going to look in the chat if there's any questions. But what I find so interesting is that in the rice diet, where the foods that were used, which were fruit and rice and sometimes sugar, even when somebody isn't on the rice diet, these foods are always vilified. And yet I feel that they're healthy foods. I personally eat them. And yes. but people, people, you know, even people bash fruit, you know. Yes. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's interesting. We're trying to find uh, people that deliver home meals to deliver a dash diet, and and they've they've never heard of that. It's, it's a, they're they're putting out all these uh, uh, paleo diets and that sort of thing, but nobody provides home delivered dash meals. And I think there's that there's 130 million people out there that ought to be on that. Well, you know, actually, there are some food delivery companies that I've, I've worked with that that actually do. You may not be aware of Mama Says, but okay. she makes Chef AJ type food. No sugar, uh, no oil, no salt. Yeah. So I would think that would meet the approval if you'd like to know a little bit about it. Yeah, yeah. send me some more information about that. I, I sure will. Dr. Okay. Grimm, I believe that the last time you were on, you had slides of someone that maybe you're still working with or work with, but he, you didn't you didn't say his name. I think, did you call him? like a patient that didn't want to be named, but that, that has had success on this diet? Um, yeah, I've, I've got a number of people. Uh, my website that I use is, uh, uh, it's main, dot hyper, main at hyperaldosteronism.groups.io. And there, there are uh, hundreds of people there that are on the DASH diet for their blood pressure due to this special cause. And they're very experienced at that, and they learn how to do that. And many of them use the app called Chronometer because you can track your sodium potassium intake with that and many other things. Uh, but it's very easy to see in, in just a day or two of tracking that you're eating way too much salt and likely not enough potassium. It's very it's very useful for feedback. The, uh, the best feedback in these patients uh, is that their blood pressure, sudden, if they go off the diet, the blood pressure goes right back up and their headaches start and they don't feel well. So that's pretty good reinforcement. 
<laughs> when you yeah. can see that happen, you, you begin to believe in the, in the eating plan. Yep, absolutely. There's a question. Can you, how do you lower eye pressure to stop glaucoma? Uh, there are drugs that uh, affect the transport of salt uh, in the eye, in and out, and uh, they're, they're, it's different than high blood pressure. Although high blood pressure and high retinal pressure uh, sometimes run together. If you have hypertension, you may be more likely to have that. The cause are, is not really known. Thank you. And Stephanie says, what specific fruits did Dr. Kempner use for his patients to increase potassium? Uh, he, he used uh, diet, um, fruit, fruit juices, and, and uh, uh, I, I don't know that he ever gave, I'm trying to remember if he ever gave potassium pills. I don't remember. I do remember that he used a lot of placebos. And he would have a red placebo and a gray, a gray placebo and a blue placebo. And uh, so if a patient was complaining of something on the ward, he'd say, uh, let's give her number four, which might have been the red placebo. And it was amazing how many people got better when Dr. Kempner gave him this placebo because they thought he, they were, he was giving them something uh, that worked and it did work. <laughs> they believed in him and it did work. That's something, but like, like, did he give apples, bananas, oranges? Or yeah. yeah. Any yeah. kind of fruit? Yeah. yeah. Any, any kind of fruit's got, got potassium in it. I recommend low sodium V8 because a cup of that will give you almost a thousand milligrams of uh, potassium. It's the oh. easiest way to get potassium in. Oh, nice. A few, a few people I even recommend putting vodka in it. <laughs> That's funny. Peter says that his brother's kidney function on a Kempner type diet went from about 10% to 35% in 10 days. And he feels a hundred times better. Now the diet works and it works fast. Yes, that's true. Very true. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. You know, it's funny because, you know, we always talk about the love affair that Americans have with sugar or sugar and fat, but you know, salt is like the, and nobody really talks about the problem with salt in this country. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think salt is probably addictive. Um, I, I know it is, but I, I mean, I, I not for me, but I see it with the people yeah. who can't give it up. If it's not addictive, yeah. then why do they have to use it? I've done hundreds of studies of normal people on a low sodium, normal sodium, and a high sodium diet, and and when I put them on a normal sodium diet, they always say, "Doc, when am I going to get off this low sodium diet?" And and I'm i just I'm just sure it's addictive. Yeah. Uh, you might want to have a conversation sometime with Dr. Alan Goldhammer. He is the founder of the True North Health Center, where he does water fasting, medically supervised. Uh -huh. And he recommends right. a zero salt, not a zero sodium, yeah. but a zero right. added salt yeah. honey. Yeah. Yeah. He's done studies about taste neuroadaptation about that. But because I'm one of these people that doesn't use any salt, everything tastes really good to me, yeah. but it takes yeah. some time. You can't expect to go to your cur current diet and love the food right away. But if you give right. it some time, you know, your taste buds will adjust. And then when you have salt, it's like, whoa, that's like yeah. really, yeah. really salty. Yeah. Um, Liz says, should she take anything when hiking on a hot day to get electrolytes? Uh, the key thing is just to drink, be sure you drink plenty of water. Any of the supplements, uh, Gatorade and so forth, are are useful as well. The key thing is to drink drink enough so, uh, water because you're sweating and and most of the sweat is water. It's also sodium and potassium, by the way. But yeah. generally, you're as long as you got plenty of water, you'll be okay unless you go for more than four or five hours. Um, and it, it, there actually were some interesting studies done during the Second World War where they they wanted to see if if you could train British Marines to do without water uh, in the in the African jungle. And they found that even, even British Marines would fall down and faint and get muscle cramps when they when they were on no water. So, and they refused to get up. So you got to have water. Absolutely. So uh, Colette asks a live viewer, can this diet also treat AFib? But maybe you can say, does the rice diet treat anything else other than hypertension, diabetes, or obesity? <laughs> right. Uh, um, Dr. McDougall showed some evidence that it helps psoriasis, for example. Um, <clears throat> um, I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah. If, if you've got, uh, some people have leg pain when they walk, claudication, because the, the blood flow improves when you, when you lower the salt intake. Uh, one of the reasons the blood pressure goes up in a high salt diet is your blood vessels constrict down. And uh, that decreases blood flow to your legs and they, they may get tired. They may hurt when you walk. And that gets better when you move to a low sodium diet. Perfect. 
in this diet have macular degeneration? Um, not that I'm aware of. I would think probably not, but I've not seen any trials of that. Terrific. And let's see. Terry says, is the rice diet a temporary diet and the results similar to water only fasting? Um, yeah, I, I think it's better to consider the word eating plan, the words eating plan rather than diet. Uh, most people have to stay on this forever. Uh, if you if you want to stay thin and you're 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 uh, eating too much, you've got to keep the eating too much down. If your blood pressure is high because of salt, you've got to keep the salt down. It doesn't cure; it makes it disappear, and the the diabetes goes away. It's not cured; it just is not there anymore because you're not aggravating your body. Yeah. That's incredible. When I've traveled and I hardly travel anymore, sometimes the only thing I could get that was on my eating plan was white rice. And I would get so skinny when that was all I ate. And that's why when people say rice makes you fat, I'm like, really? Yeah. Have you really just yeah. eaten it? Because it really can't. <laughs> if it's actually the opposite. Yes. Okay. Did you actually get to meet Buddy Hackett? Uh, no, I did not. I uh, didn't. He's I, one of my favorite comedians, but I, he was, uh, I, I remember him growing up on the Tonight Show. He was yes. hilarious. Yes, hilarious. He was. Um, I'm guessing that ocular occlusion, uh, somebody's asking Pat if this diet can help that. A lot of people seem to have eye problems that they're yeah. hoping this could. Uh, yes, if, if the high, eye problems, and Dr. Kempner actually has some patients who couldn't read because of the blurring that, that the pictures that Dr. McDougall showed that got back to normal vision again. Uh, so it depends on if if it's a blood clot that's happened in your eye, it's probably not going to help. It it may as well stop more blood clots from coming. So I'd I'd say give it a try. You know, what have you the, the Dash Diet book I recommend has a fourteen day trial. And here, if you eat exactly that for fourteen days, then you can test whether this is going to help you or not. Great. So. The white rice that Dr. Kempner used, my understanding is it was it was washed first to get every last bit of sodium, yes, sodium and, off. Yeah, so yeah. Claire is saying, well, what about right pre cooked white rice in microwavable packets? Would that yeah. be suitable for this diet? Uh, I, I read the label. The uh, many of those say zero salt, but many don't. So you've got to read the label. You want you want a zero salt rice. That means it hasn't had salt added to it. But yeah. they're, they're out because I, I use those every once in a while. Right. I, Su Susie's saying if the rice and fruit diet works, is it okay to eat only fruit? I think you'd be very hungry. Yeah, you'd have to eat an awful lot of fruit. Yeah, that's <laughs> I, yeah. I, you could do that, I guess. But uh, yeah, it, it, but it, I find it, that the rice is more satiating. Yes, yes, no, exactly. I, and, yeah. 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 So uh, Ron, Ron is saying, would miso soup be acceptable because of the high sodium content? And you know what I'd love for you to talk about? Because even in our plant-based world, there seems to be some uh, disagreement about whether miso is salt or not, because supposedly some of the doctors say, well, it has these wonderful benefits and it doesn't react to the body like salt. But if I understand you correctly, whether it's low sodium soy sauce, tamari, Bragg's amino acid, yeah, yeah you know miso salt is salt regardless yes, exactly of exactly yeah so look at this look at the sodium content of the miso soup you're eating and you'll you'll you can punch, punch it in at one of those apps fitness pal is one chronometer is another and you, you can see how much it, it'll tell you how much salt's there yeah mary beth said could you please say the name of the dash diet book again it's dietary approaches to stopping hypertension the first author is more m-o-o-r-e uh, it's been out about 20 years. It has a very good description, lay description of the science of the diet, why these things were chosen to, to be part of the DASH diet and how they tested that. They basically fed people different where they, they had to eat everything exactly from a kitchen that was pre-prepared. So they, they, it was harder to cheat. And they did measure urine sodiums to be sure they were still there. Yeah, that's interesting. So the one of the viewers would like to know is the dash diet vegan and i would ask if it's not could a person do it the way we do it here uh it, it's not completely vegan but you could certainly make it make it that way i think um nice some might even <laughs> argue it's a better i don't know well, maybe we should write a book the vegan dash diet <laughs> yeah yeah that's really interesting so vegan diets are, are low sodium they may not be particularly high potassium oh that's interesting yeah 
Very interesting. I love this. Well, this has just been such an interesting conversation. It was great connecting you and Dr. McDougal, and he's the one that, that found you. So thank you so much. And if people want to work okay. with you, we have all your information in the show notes okay. that you gave me last Good. time. I, I just copied and pasted them. You know, it's interesting because I asked Dr. McDougal for a suggested broadcast title, and it originally was two old salts talk nutrition, but I didn't even realize salt because we were actually talking about salt with two old salts. <laughs> right. Good. I right. enjoyed it a lot. Yes, thank you. Please, time. please uh, feel free to come back either by yourself or with Dr. McDougall. And okay. if you want to bring some of your patients on that they can talk about their remarkable success stories, we always like a good success story. Okay, good. I'll, I'll see if any of my patients would be interested in doing that. Very yeah, good. because, you know, I think people can't believe that people can stick to this yeah, diet yeah. is what I yeah. I think, you know. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. Seeing, seeing is believing. All right. Well, thank you. And if okay. you don't, if you, and if you think you're, I love that, that you, you, the P never lies. The P, right. yeah, the yeah, P yeah. never lies. You, ask, can always, you can ask your doctor to check that if you don't believe me. Yeah. Ask your doctor to check the sodium and potassium in your urine. Absolutely. Yeah, right. people say, thanks so much, Dr. Grimm. Take Thank care. You. Bye now. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back at noon tomorrow. We're starting the show a little bit later because she's doing this on her lunch hour. One of the staff doctors at the True North Health Center. She's wonderful. Her name is Dr. Chilla Vares, and she's going to be talking about stress resistance for optimal health. Thanks so much. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing and 